Sawadika. Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you the perfect appetizer. These are so addictive and super easy to make. You can make them even two days before. I'm talking about corn fritters. Now, growing up, I used to eat corn fritters all the time. We used to make it a lot, but we used to buy pre-made sort of deep frying batter mix from the store. But now that I am older and wiser, I realize that it's so easy to make your own and it's lighter and crispier and I much prefer it this way. So I'm going to share this recipe with you. Let's get started. All right, let's talk about corn, the main ingredient. I recommend using fresh uncooked corn for this because if you buy frozen corn or canned corn, those have already been cooked. And when you cook corn, it loses some of that sweet juice with lots of corn flavor. But if you use fresh, it's all in here. So I'm going to slice off the kernels. I'm just going to put down a little piece of paper towel here to prevent my corn from slipping. Now, if your bowl has a high edge and your knife is hitting the edge of it, you can just put the corn up on an inverted bowl. And just make sure you get as close to the core as possible because you don't want to lose any goodness. And if you're making corn soup with leftover corn, you can add this to your simmering pot and it'll infuse extra corn flavor into the soup. All right, let's make the batter. So I've got here some all-purpose flour. And to this, I am going to add some cornstarch. And this is the secret. This is the reason why this batter is so crispy. If you don't have cornstarch, you can also use rice flour. Rice flour batter tends to be a little lighter, whereas cornstarch batter tends to be tends to have a firmer crunch. So either is really good, you really can't go wrong. Shredded coconut, a little bit of nuttiness, that coconut flavor. Mm -mm -mm some baking powder to help give a little airiness to the batter, make it a little bit lighter, and some salt. This is the basic batter, but I'm going to sort of spice it up with a few add-ins. So I've got some black sesame seeds. Now this is optional, but I think it just adds extra color, something spicy. I've got here some finely chopped jalapenos. Now, I remove the seeds and the pith to make it a little less spicy, but you're getting a little kick in every bite. Cut the jalapeno in quarters and slice off the seeds and then just finely, finely dice it. Okay, this is optional. If you don't want to make this spicy, if you're making this for kids, you can leave it out. There's something about corn and jalapenos. The flavors really go well together. Some green onions. Love green onions in this recipe. And I like to mix all my dry ingredients first, get them evenly distributed so that I don't have to stir the batter as much because once you add, once you add the water, the more you stir, the more gluten you develop and that's, gluten is the enemy of light and crispy batter. So that's what you're trying to avoid. And that's the reason why I'm adding ice water. Cold temperature also prevents gluten development. And that's why in tempura recipes, you'll always see them asking for ice water. So with the water, I add most of it, not all of it. And then if I need more, then I add a little more water. I don't dump the whole thing. Because sometimes, depending on how you measure flour, you get a little less, a little more flour. So what you're looking for is a thin batter. Now I'm going to pour the batter over the corn. I'm going to pour most of it and reserve some because depending on the size of your corn, you may not need all the batter. And if you pour everything in, you just get a lot of batter and not a lot of corn. But this is a pretty big corn. I probably will need everything. And it also depends on how much batter you want your end product to have. Some people like just all corn and just enough batter to glue everything together but some people do like the crunch of the batter so they want you know a substantial amount of batter so that's something you can customize the beautiful thing about this, this is why i love this recipe so much you can mix it like this let it sit in the fridge until tomorrow and when your friends or whatever come over and you're ready to eat, then you fry it up. The batter will still be perfectly fine. In fact, you can just fry up as much as you need to eat today, put the rest in the fridge, bring it out tomorrow or the day after and fry it up again. So that's what I do is because I can't eat all this and it's not really great reheated. It's best if you eat it fresh. Now all we need to do is fry these babies up. All right, so I've got my frying oil here, just some canola oil. 
and the temperature I like to get it up to 375 because the batter is ice cold so when you drop in your first few it's gonna drop the oil significantly but 350 is what we try to maintain it at So if you can see, these are a little bit clumpy. They're not sliding as much. So what I've done is I've added a little more water to my batter to allow them to sort of slide out more when they go into the oil. So your first batch is always sort of a test batch. You can see if there's always there enough batter. Is it too thick, too thin? And you want to use your cook's intuition to make adjustments accordingly. Okay. Every once in a while, you want to go in and get rid of these flyaway bits. And you can keep them, munch on them if you want, but you don't want to leave them lingering in the oil because eventually they're going to burn and that's how you destroy the oil quality. Check these out. They are nice and golden brown and the batter is super crispy. These are good on their own, but they are even better if you dip it in some siracha hot sauce and Guess what? I have a recipe for it if you want to make your own homemade siracha and I've got some right here. Mm. Mm. You hear how crunchy that is? Mm. And the corn is super sweet. This is the benefit of using fresh corn. All the flavor is still in there. We haven't lost anything so if you can don't use frozen corn or, or canned, okay? And the, the sweetness of the corn, the slight saltiness of the batter really works well with the vinegary tartness, spiciness of the hot sauce. Oh my God, if I had a glass of beer or something fizzy and cold right now, it would be perfect. So the recipe is on hotthaikitchen.com as always. When you make it, Please send me a photo either through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and you might see it in the Hot Thai Kitchen newsletter. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do, and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal. Here at Hot Thai Kitchen, we practice safe working environments. Thank you, Adam.